Oki. 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 Oki and welcome. We acknowledge that we're gathered on the lands of the Blackfoot people of the Canadian Plains. We pay respect to the Blackfoot people's past, present, and future. We recognize the thousands of Indigenous peoples from many diverse nations call Lethbridge home, including members of the Blackfoot Confederacy, of the Six Gates of the Akana, Ikani, Siksika, and Skapi people, as well as other First Nations, Metis, and Inuit peoples. We respect Indigenous peoples' cultural heritage, beliefs, truth, and relationship to the land that stretches back in time. We will not blink at history. We will not blink at history. And we will learn from it. Oki is an invitation. A step forward. In Blackfoot, Oki means hello. Oki means hello. Hello. Oki. 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 And welcome to the lands of the Blackfoot people. That was our Oki video, which has the goal of increasing awareness, education, and conversation in the spirit of truth and reconciliation within the city and community. It was created with our Indigenous partners and produced by local company, Output Media. Thank you to the Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce, Stringham LLP, the Lethbridge Coast Hotel and Conference Centre, and all of you for coming here today for this 2023 State of the City Address. It's been 15 months since myself and councillors Mark Campbell, Jeff Carlson, Belinda Croson, Ray Kododek, John Middleton Hope, Nick Palladino, Ryan Parker, and Jen Schmidt Rempel took our oath of office and formed the current Lethbridge City Council. It's been a great honour and privilege for all of us to serve the Lethbridge residents. Council will continue to work with our local elected representatives, MP Rachel Thomas, MLA Shannon Phillips, and Nathan Newdorf and other orders of government for the collective goal of creating a better Lethbridge and to advocate for the resources and funding our city needs to address key issues. We will push to further secure and advance our business sector needs so we can be the first place investors and businesses come when they look to open new doors and new ventures. Between City Council, City Administration and all the hardworking departments in the corporation, there were some challenges in 2022 and here into 2023. I'll talk today about physician recruitment efforts, community safety, plus the city's budget and taxes. There are also plenty of good news stories from the city of Lethbridge, many of which I'll speak about here this morning. I'll discuss results of the 2022 Community Satisfaction Survey, which shows 90% of respondents rank their quality of life in Lethbridge as good or very good. I'll talk about the airport, Festival Square, our wonderful community and regional partners, as well as the Intergovernmental Health Table, the Clean Energy Program, and the city's upcoming new website and customer portal. Long story short, Lethbridge is the gateway to opportunity. During the course of this presentation, I will show you why. I'll be speaking this morning on items focused around six different sections. City Council's 2022 Gateway to Opportunity Action Plan, our top priority and issues, major projects and events, major community and regional partners, City of Lethbridge finances, plus next steps for 2023 and beyond. One year ago, almost to the day, Council was happy to unveil its Gateway to Opportunity 2022 Action Plan, which outlines the initiatives we have identified as priorities. Council pledged an approach that clearly articulates priorities, creates further transparency, reports performance, and builds community trust. Council's action plan was created using the Municipal Development Plan, the MDP, as a guiding strategic document. Goals in the MDP include setting a vision and policy and the guidance for the city to improve residents' quality of life, to meet the community's changing needs, to foster a prosperous local economy, and to grow in a responsible manner for years to come. The initiatives identified in the Council Action Plan are each aligned to one or more of the NDP's six strategic themes, economically prosperous, 
healthy and diverse, culturally vibrant, a well-designed city, environmentally responsible, and supports the region. The action plan includes 24 initiatives prioritized as now, next, or later items. Seven initiatives have been completed, including six of the eight identified as Council's most immediate priorities. The fourth quarter update will be coming to Lethbridge City Council next week. A further detailed look at the action plan can be found at lethbridge.ca slash 2022 action plan. In this next section, I'll identify and discuss some of the top priorities and issues in Lethbridge, including community safety, supporting the vulnerable population, budgetary impacts, physician recruitment and retention, as well as snow control changes. This is by no means a full or exhaustive list. The Big C, City of Lethbridge Corporation, is not the only exclusive municipality facing similar challenges, and the City of Lethbridge is not solely responsible on jurisdiction on some of these matters. These are issues happening in our community, however, so we do have the responsibility to do what we can within the roles and continue to advocate in areas of need to other levels of government. Lethbridge City Council and City of Lethbridge staff care deeply about the wellness of our community. The annual Stats Canada Crime Severity Index, which always seems to draw the most negative of headlines when it's released each year, is on a downward trend, as it is in many parts of the country. From 2020 to 2021, the CSI was down by more than 7% in Lethbridge. The city has a role of ensuring a clean and safe community, facilitating partnerships and advocating other orders of government for the services that we need. Much work has been done from city administration and past city council to move this forward. Responding to a drug crisis is a very complex issue. The city is one partner in this response as we work to support the provincial government and agencies who provide the programs and services related to addictions and mental health in our community. Our intergovernmental health table, which I will speak about later, will also help address these matters going forward. We will always advocate for the resources we need, but Council does not direct the Lethbridge Police Service. This is the role of the Police Commission. And I'll speak more about community safety in a couple of slides from now when we discuss the budgetary impacts. Here's a graphic outlining government's roles and responsibilities in responding to homelessness. One of the biggest components at the municipal level is to advocate other orders of government for further supports in the city. On the note of advocacy and supporting the vulnerable population, we now have updated data collected from local so social service organizations and shelters during last fall's 2022 point in time. That's the pit count which indicates at least 454 individuals were experiencing homelessness on September 27, 2022. This number more than doubled from the previous count in 2018. This demonstrates a great need for more affordable and supportive housing and services to support the system of care for those most vulnerable in our community. Results from the Lethbridge 2022 pit count will be used to improve our community's response by identifying service needs and informing plans to prevent and reduce homelessness. The City of Lethbridge continues to advocate and implement increased supports under the Community Wellbeing and Safety Strategy for those experiencing homelessness in our community. To view the final PIT report and for more information on other initiatives community social development is working on, please visit the city's website. Last July, City Council allocated up to $230,000 in one-time funding from the corporate budget contingencies to assist in the administrative and policing funding shortfalls to expedite compassionate cleanup of the encampments as they continued to pose a safety risk to both the individuals living there as well as the rest of the community. Creating a safe and viable community continues to be a priority as does a compassionate approach to our homeless population. In November, City Council received a report outlining community feedback around the potential development of an interim sober shelter at the former Civic Curling Centre. Following the presentation, Council voted unanimously 
to rescind previous direction to apply for a development permit for this site and instead continue to explore this and other possible sites. Administration has been directed to return to Cultural and Social Standing Policy Committee with alternative sites to consider. City Council also authorized the Mayor to write a letter to the Provincial Government requesting support on funding opportunities and the site selections for sober shelters in Lethbridge. To work to develop an interim sober shelter location looks at mid-range options to address housing challenges in Lethbridge while also working toward long-term solutions. Council's decision to move to the discussion on location to a standing policy committee will allow for additional community feedback and conversation. Lethbridge City Council in November voted unanimously to approve the City of Lethbridge's 2023-2026 operating budget. With its approval, the 2023-2026 average annual change in municipal tax rate is 5.1% for each of the next four years. This is equal to $129.93 per year per, sing per single family house based on an average market value of $285,800. Public safety is the number one concern residents came to City Council with, and this budget reflects the investment we're making to address those concerns. No one welcomes a tax increase, but with zero increases over the past three years and climbing inflation, this is the budget needed to maintain our service levels and address those resident concerns. In 2019, there was a 1.8% municipal tax increase, increase, which was the lowest in 20 years. The City of Lethbridge then maintained a 0% increase to municipal portion of residential taxes for the three years of 2020, 2021 and 2022 to minimize the financial impacts of the pandemic to property owners. If you look at the overall changes from 2019 to 2026, the average increase is less than 2 0.8% per year during that eight-year span. The national inflation rate is also currently 6.9%. So I really want to thank Council and Administration for making sound decisions for, better, for the betterment of our community. The Municipal Government does not have jurisdiction over health care in Alberta, but Lethbridge City Council continues to support efforts to attract and retain medical professionals for the community. A healthy, and thriving community has to include a strong base of family doctors. In phase one of marketing, the City of Lethbridge joined together with the Chinook Primary Care Network, Alberta Health Services, and Economic Development Lethbridge for a campaign designed to sell physicians on the many different benefits of building a life and business in Lethbridge. Phase two of the City's marketing campaign to attract new physicians launched on December 29th, 2022, with a post-media buy across the country. This phase is targeted to cities and newspapers where interest was previously demonstrated. The package included one editorial piece, which ran in the National Post, featuring Dr. Garland Jonathan, a local physician that city administration has worked with for more than a year on this file. We also continued to advocate for partnership and promotion of the virtual opioid dependency program with mental health and addictions, as well for the addition of a catheterization lab in Lethbridge, and for an academic training and teaching clinic. Last September, Alberta Health Services announced that 17 family, me family medical physicians have committed to Lethbridge and are awaiting their College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta practice readiness assessments. Four have started, two more are anticipated to begin this month, and five more by April and the final six by July. Here's a marketing video created to help tell the story of Lethbridge. This is a story that started by a river, nestled in the prairies, at the foot of the mountains. In this place grew a city that from its beginning had an eye towards the future. Today, 
Lethbridge has grown into something better. A gateway to opportunity. A place that's learning, adapting. A place where athletes are forged and artists flourish. A place where Oki. 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 Oki means hello. This is a story of a city built around balance between industry and community, arts and science, work and play. Lethbridge is far from the noise, but close to the action. This is a story of resilience, a city reconciling with its past to meet the challenge of the future. This is the story of a city by the river. One whose best chapters are not behind, but ahead. Come be a part of it. That story of Lethbridge video was also produced by a local company, Output Media. Now, let's move on to snow control changes. Each winter, City of Lethbridge Transportation Operations staff provide winter snow and ice control services to keep Lethbridge safely on the move. In response to public feedback and City Council approval, the City will be adjusting snow clearing practices. Some of those changes residents will notice this winter include Phase 1 snow roads will be activated during heavy snow events. This will include temporary parking restrictions with enforcement and the implementation of plowing to the right of approximately 25 kilometers of selected roadways. Starting in the winter of 2023 to 2024 and continuing into the winter of 2024-2025, phase two will include the provision of more residential plowing, less snow removal, snow removal only in the, in the hospital area, downtown and around schools, in combination with declaring snow routes more frequently citywide, with enforcement of snow route parking restrictions. Find out more about this project, view snow routes, access notification tools, and provide feedback by visiting Get Involved Lethbridge Snow and Ice Control Changes. Residents can also call or, or go to our online chat at 311 with inquiries and comments related to this project. In this next section, I'll identify and discuss some of the major projects and events that have started, happened, or have been updated in Lethbridge in the past year or so. Last May, we were pleased to have a grand reopening of the Lethbridge Airport, which is a key piece of infrastructure in the continued growth of our economy. After investing $2.6 million into the airport, the city leveraged an additional $23 million in provincial and federal grant funding for a variety of critical infrastructure projects. Those projects focused on increasing passenger traffic, revenue diversification through land development, fire safety, and more. This positions our city and region in a competitive place for business attraction and retention for years to come. The city has a path forward to increasing passenger traffic and revenue diversification through land development. When fully completed, the YQL lands could provide $10 million annually in lease revenue. Construction work continues at the Lethbridge Airport with the pavement rehabilitation, baggage carousel, airfield lighting system, all to be completed this year. Lethbridge City Council last year also endorsed a new airport incentive framework designed to find and discuss potential agreements with airlines regarding future, op future options for passengers flying in and out of Lethbridge. Of course, we were disappointed in November due to the supply chain issues and subsequent safety concerns, the difficult decision was made to cancel the upcoming Flair Airlines route from Lethbridge to Tucson and defer the launch until next season. I was scheduled to be on that flight, so I'm excited that it's actually gonna be returning next year. Last year, we were pleased to open the new Festival Square Market Plaza in downtown Lethbridge. The $1.71 million project 
entirely funded through the Province of Alberta's Provincial Municipal Stimulus Program is a versatile, active and engaging public space for people and the local businesses in the area. We've already seen the farmer's market return, a skating rink, several major big screen viewings such as the Amazing Race Canada and Canada's Games at the 2022 World Cup, as well as other events and Oktoberfest, of course. Festival Square, along with the rebuilt stretch of 3rd Avenue from 4th Street to 8th Street in downtown Lethbridge are two extremely important projects that have given new life to existing assets that have built off the success of our patio and parklet infrastructure investment. Last August, we are thrilled to officially open the second phase of Legacy Park, the regional north destination for residents and visitors. Phase two amenities include a spray park, Discovery Playground, Pavilion, and Picnic Shelter. With generous funding coming from the, the Government of Canada and Government of, of Alberta, the City of Lethbridge has capitalized on creating a fun play space, enjoyable for all. At 550 square meters, this is now the largest spray park location in the city. Construction of additional pickleball courts should be underway this year. More information was presented to Economic Standing Policy Committee on Wednesday. In celebration of Nat National Indigenous Peoples Day in 2022, we encourage the community to add a Blackfoot word into their vocabulary. Sikokitoki is a Blackfoot word for the land Lethbridge is created on. By bringing attention to the word and working to incorporate it in everyday conversation, it helps to recognize Blackfoot culture throughout the city and beyond. In September, the City of Lethbridge partnered with six organizations within the community to continue the celebration of Blackfoot culture and the city's official greeting, Oki. The additional Oki signs are hosted at the following partner locations. Primaris, which is the Park Place Mall, the University of Lethbridge, the Galt Museum and Archives, Lethbridge Public Library, Allied Art Council, and Lethbridge and District Exhibition. The purpose of this continued initiative is to celebrate Blackfoot culture and language across the community and to celebrate the important role that Oki has come to play in our community as a symbol of respect, understanding, and reconciliation, and the hallmark of Sikokito, which is Lethbridge. If there's one street in Sikokito, Lethbridge, that perhaps best, best reflects Nitsitapi, Blackfoot culture and territory our city is located on. It is the Great Bear Boulevard. Along the approximately 600 meter stretch of road, there's a number of indigenous art installations and references to the Blackfoot culture. One of the biggest events to grace our city in recent years was the 2022 Tim Hortons Briar. What an absolutely incredible showcase this was for our city, especially as the pandemic capacity limit restrictions were lifted only days earlier. Hotels and restaurants were packed. I'd like to again thank all the organizers, the Lethbridge Curling Club, the volunteers especially, the NMAC Centre and all the attendees for making this event a major success. The 2022 Briar generated more than $10 million of total money spent in Lethbridge. I'd say that's a pretty great return for the $1 million investment or cash in kind support that was contributed from the city. By hosting the Briar, we have previously hosted the Men's World Curling Championship, the World Mixed Doubles Curling Championship, the World Seniors Curling Championship, the World Women's Curling Championships, and the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Lethbridge is now the only city to have hosted each and all of these events. What a notable accomplishment. Lethbridge was a recipient of a $5.5 million of government funding to improve broadband internet connectivity in the Sharing and Churchill Industrial Parks. We know how this has been a major need for years and in, Ju in July last year, the first customer installation took place with many more fall in the following weeks. Since March 11th, 2019, the friendly folks at 311 have been helping answer residents' questions 
about city services. Residents rely on 311 to get answers, and now contacting them is easier than ever. Last fall, we launched 311 Chat, a live online chat available on lethbridge.ca and 311.lethbridge.ca as a new convenient way for residents to get answers to their questions about city services. For those unaware, through the Lethbridge Loop app, we also have a way for Lethbridge residents to receive City of Lethbridge service reminders. Residents can download the free smartphone app to receive waste and recycling reminders, as well as notifications for planned power outages, street sweeping, and water main work. And I gotta tell you, the reminder for putting out my recycling has always been a great thing. Lethbridge Loop allows the city to send notifications directly to residents so they can be in the loop about scheduled services that affect their homes and daily lives. Here's a short video on the Lethbridge Loop app. It was also produced by a local company, Coalbanks Creative. your friends and influence your neighbors by downloading the new Lethbridge Loop app. You'll never miss another city service reminder. Lethbridge Fire and Emergency Services are using technology and education to solve industry-wide challenges in cardiac resuscitation. Using data from real-time events, Lethbridge Fire and Emergency Services has worked with Alberta Health Services to create new protocols that are saving lives and garnering attention from agencies across North America. More than 90% of lo local cardiac arrest patients who are resuscitated by LFES are now arriving at the hospital with a pulse. Prior to implementing a new software called Case Review, just 50% of patients arrived with a pulse. One of the provider trends identified by playing back real-time events was that cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, was sometimes stopped for a short time for other treatments, like starting an IV. After identifying those pauses, crews have changed their processes to ensure CPR is never stopped for any reason. LFES has presented their new processes and results at several industry conferences, including the Paramedicine Across Canada Expo that was held in Saskatoon this past September. Last July, City Council approved $90,000 from Council contingencies for Lethbridge Transit through the Fee Assistance Program to provide a free six-month bus pass to all refugees arriving in Lethbridge in 2022. At the end of 2022, there were funds remaining in the program that were not used. These funds have been approved for the use to continue this program through January and February 2023, or until all previously applied funding is spent. Leopards Transit will issue two-month two -month bus passes for eligible applicants in January and one-month passes to eligible applicants in February until funding runs out. A Transit Support Pass Program Policy will, present, will be presented to the Governance Standing Policy Committee meeting on February 23rd for ongoing operations of the program. After the summer of 2021, this is one of the biggest topics at 2022 State of the City Address. Good news, we haven't forgotten. Our park and cemetery staff have identified several strategies, including grasshopper predictions were performed in the fall of 2021, regular spraying will continue throughout the season, communication to the public via social media and web page updates to help inform citizens on how to identify these issues, what they can do, and how to notify the city. Grasshopper monitoring plan, which began last June. If grasshopper populations increase, explore different treatment options by partnering with Dan Johnson from the University of Lethbridge. And pre-emergent spraying for foxtails in the fall of 2022. We're thrilled that the Nikki Yukubuka Center is open and it's become the new cultural centerpiece of the garden experience. Lethbridge's Heritage Program was established in 2007 
the adoption of the Heritage Management Plan. The plan is currently being updated with feedback open until January 20th. The Historic Places Advisory Committee was created by a previous City Council to provide advice regarding the potential of a site for designation as a Municipal Historic Resource. Since 2007, City Councils have, des have, have designated 28 historic places within Lethbridge as Municipal Historic Resources. Last year, the Oliver Block was the last to receive the designation. The two-story building located at 316 Fifth Street South is one of the early symbols of economic prosperity and showcases some of the most interesting painted brick detailing in the downtown area. The building was purchased in 2017, saved from demolition and extensively restored by the current owner, Hunter Hagee. Results of the 2022 community survey showed that 90% of respondents ranked their quality of life in Lethbridge as good or very good. The survey collected residents' feedback on topics like top of mind issues, satisfaction, importance and usage of city services, communication, customer service, financial planning and taxation, and overall quality of life. The 2022 community survey was conducted using statistically valid phone survey balancing an even mix of gender, age, income level, education, areas of the city, household size, and years living in Lethbridge. The survey reached residents by both landline and cell phone and randomly called participants, helping to get an even representation from the sometimes silent majority. It's a useful tool and, is, and essentially a community report card to help inform council on how residents see their quality of life in our city and their thoughts on city services. It's been a year and a half already, but in June 2021, on the 112th anniversary of the completion of the Lethbridge's iconic high-level bridge, the City of Lethbridge introduced a fresh new brand. This change was designed to help build community pride while attracting new visitors, investors, businesses, students, and residents. The City of Lethbridge's brand is built on four foundations, community, service, people, and success. The visual aspects of the brand combine the elements of a progressive city with local perspectives while trying in the movement of the Old Man River located in the heart of Blackfoot Territory. Let's take a look at a promotional video created by our Communications and Engagement Department in-house. When our city was founded way back in 1906, it was still searching for its identity. So City Council put up a $25 prize in a community-wide coat of arms contest. That contest established the symbol that would represent our city for the next 114 years. But our story has changed so much over the last century. We've grown from 2,300 people to a population of more than 100,000 strong. That makes us the third largest city in Alberta. We have two world-class post-secondary institutions. And we're the hub for an emerging agri-food industry. We're known for our picturesque parks and amazing facilities. We're growing into a progressive city that continues to attract students, residents, businesses, and visitors. Lethbridge is Alberta's blueprint for success. The solution that integrates community strength, strong roots, ingenuity, opportunity, and purpose built to serve and grow an evolving community. We are an inspirational force of nature built with the aim to instill trust and provide limitless possibilities for the future while honoring and recognizing that these are the traditional lands of the Blackfoot people. We love the history of our crest, but it's time to bridge our past with our future. We're a growing city.
with forward-thinking perspectives. It's time to step up and speak out about the amazing opportunities right here in Lethbridge. This is our new story. Let's turn the page. This will be one of the shorter sections today, but it's also the one that has the most collective impact. All of these logos and apologies if anyone was missed represent some of the most important stakeholders for our community and region. City Council and City Administration look forward to working with all of you moving forward. The Lethbridge and District Exhibition Expansion Project and Agri-Food Hub is getting closer and closer to its grand opening. This project is a huge economic catalyst that will lead to greater investment and job creation as agricultural industries further develop in the city and the region. Lethbridge is proud to be recognized as part of Canada's premier food corridor and we look forward to strengthening that position with this project. Our ability to produce world-class research and innovation between our two outstanding post-secondary institutions is phenomenal. I look forward to continuing to work together with the University of Lethbridge and the Lethbridge College to leverage their work and the work that they do to bring focus to how they're changing the game of technology and innovation on the world stage. After many years of working to establish a permanent site Last April finally marked the grand opening of the permanent location of the Lethbridge Sports Hall of Fame at the ATB Centre. Lethbridge City Council is thrilled that this permanent space is finally open for our community to see and to celebrate. For a city our size, we have certainly produced an incredible amount of amazing athletes, coaches, builders and Olympians. We've also created a wonderful legacy by hosting many world-class events right here in Lethbridge. Sporting events have the power to bring people and culture together, and this local commemoration is great to see. With the fourth annual Brighter Together Business Survey, Economic Development Lethbridge, the Downtown BRZ, and the Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce have worked together to survey local businesses in order to better understand and evaluate the business landscape in our region. The goal is to learn about opportunities to enhance their business services and reduce barriers to doing business that local organizations presently face. It measures the current economic climate, anticipates and recognizes the challenges that our local organizations are facing, and highlights and articulates our comparative advantages as a city. During the next six to 12 months, 69% of businesses are optimistic. 60% of businesses have witnessed moderate or substantial growth while only 15% witnessed a moderate or substantial decline. This is down from 25% in 2021. The top three location advantages to doing business in Lethbridge are quality of life, collaborative environment, and proximity to complementary industries. While the top three locational challenges included utilities, municipal tax environment, and workforce availability. Thank you to everyone who's contributed to this, and we look forward to hearing more of the full report very soon. We've now arrived at everyone's favorite section, City Finances. Let me begin by saying we have some excellent resources on the City's website that provide additional detail and are really easy to understand. Just visit lethbridge.ca and search City Finances. This video is a few years old and a bit simplified, but still, has relevant information as a great breakdown of the process. Let's watch it. Every year, the City of Lethbridge sends you a property tax bill in the mail. You know you have to pay the bill, but do you really understand your taxes? How do they decide how much your property is worth? How is the bill calculated? And where does all the money go? Hopefully this simple explanation gives you the answers you need this tax season. 
When you pay your taxes, a good portion of that will go to the City of Lethbridge. There will also be a portion going to the Provincial Government for Education and to Green Acres Foundation for Seniors Housing. The majority of your tax dollars go towards essential city services like police, fire, transit and roads and the remaining money is used for important programs and services that help make Lethbridge a vibrant and safe community. So now we understand why we need to gather taxes from residents. But who decides how much? As part of the Municipal Government Act, or the MGA, like all cities in Alberta, the City of Lethbridge can only collect the taxes needed to run the city. That's why it's important that City Council approves a budget that will fund all city services. Once that budget's set, other sources of revenue like provincial and federal grants are subtracted. Add in the amount the province requires us to collect for education and seniors housing, and what you're left with is the total property tax the city needs to collect in order to balance the budget. From year to year, your taxes might go up or down slightly. Let's take a look at the factors that impact your tax bill. What will it cost in the next year to run the city's programs and services? What's the assessed value of your home? And what's the current value of all the homes in Lethbridge? Now comes the tricky part, understanding how to calculate your piece of that big tax pie. To figure out your portion of the taxes, we take the total property tax needed and divide that by the value of all the properties in Lethbridge to get something called a mill rate. The assessed value of your property is timesed by the mill rate and that determines what you'll pay on your tax bill. Let's look at a quick example to see how this works. Pretend you live in a city called Taxville. Population 3. Your house is worth $150,000. Neighbor number 1 has a house worth $125,000 and neighbor number 2 has a house worth $225,000. Add all of these together and the value of all the homes in Taxville is $500,000. This year, Taxville will need $5,000 in property tax money to run the city. Divide that by the total value of all the homes, which was $500,000, and we get our mill rate of 0 .01. Now here's how we apply that to your home. If your property was assessed at $150,000 and we times that by the mill rate, your tax bill will be $1,500. Remember neighbor number one whose house was worth $125,000? Their taxes will be $12.50 and neighbor number two will pay $22.50. Here you can simply see how everyone pays their fair share of taxes based on the value of their property. Add these all together and we get the $5,000 needed to run Taxville. Now that you understand how your taxes are calculated and how those dollars are used to make Lethbridge a better place to live, we hope paying your taxes feels a little less painful and maybe a little bit more like an investment in your community. What does it take to operate the City of Lethbridge on a day-to-day -day basis? 22% protective services, that's police, fire, and EMS. 19% electric. 17% infrastructure and transportation services. 14% Leisure and Human Services. These four areas comprise more than 70% of our annual operating budget. So, where does the revenue come from for this operating budget? 42% comes from the sales and goods and services, including utility service charges and user fees for things like recreation and cultural activities. 33% come from the initial municipal portion of your property taxes and municipal levies. Here's a more detailed illustration to break down what the municipal portion of your tax bill paid in 2022. You'll again see the largest portion going towards the vital emergency services with police at 15 cents of your dollar and fire and emergency management services at 14 cents with 15 cents going to community services. The tax increase I spoke about earlier will be applied to the municipal portion of the residential property taxes. Individual properties may see a tax change on their bills for other reasons, such as a change in property assessment, meaning either your value of your home or business or multifamily complex, an increase to the Green Acres Foundation budget or to the Alberta school budget, and new construction or demolition. Property tax bills are specific to each property. 
Anyone with questions can contact 311 to get information specific to their assessment and tax bill. You can also visit www.lethbridge.ca slash taxes to learn more about property taxes. A comment and narrative that seems to be most often stated is that Lethbridge is near the top of the tax rates in Alberta. Let me help clarify. Comparing property taxes from, muni from municipality to municipality is not as straightforward as some may think. Simply comparing mill rates from municipality to municipality does not tell the entire story. Many of us have heard the phrase, comparing apples with apples, and this is the difficult part of the question. To calculate a mill rate, all municipalities use a formula. Total property taxes needed divided by total assessment value equals the mill rate. To calculate a resident's tax bill, you multiply the mill rate by the property assessed value. Residents often compare mill rates between municipalities, and this is not an apples to apples comparison. The correct comparison is to take the average home value from each municipality and multiply by the mill rate to compare the total taxes paid on an average value home. For example, an average home in Calgary, approximately $500,000, would be comparable to an average value home in Lethbridge of $310,000. To take it one step further, there should be a comparison of the levels of service of each municipality. The total property taxes needed to operate the city is approved by each municipality's council and is highly dependent on the level of services provided to its residents. In recent third-party operational reviews of the City of Lethbridge, the consultants reported the City of Lethbridge has been observed to have a higher service intensity relative to other mid-sized Canadian cities. Many people have also reached out to me regarding their recent property assessment notices and about increases they have seen. First off, you're not alone, nor is Lethbridge. Real estate values and prices are up across Alberta, which shows a strong market. Assessed values are reviewed at three points in the valuation process, by the city's internal checks and balances, by the Alberta government's annual assessed audit processes, and by individual property owners' review of their notice. You can also use the city's property information the web map, online, to compare your assessment to the neighbors and other similar properties that have recently sold. You can also contact your assessment department with any questions or more details regarding your assessment. They'd be happy to assist you and answer any inquiries. The most recent Capital Improvement Program, CIP, was for 2022 to 2031 and approved in June 2021. That council did our best to achieve a balance between essential projects and investing in projects to generate employment and improvement in the city, as well as being cautious not to spend all the money that was available to us. The full CIP is on the city's website, but some of the approved projects include the Waste and Recycling Curbside Organics Collection, Electric Bus and Charging Infrastructure, Henderson Ice Center Upgrade, Twin Outdoor Sports Courts, Legacy Park Pickleball Courts, Fritzik Pool Renovation, and the Warehouse District Area Redevelopment Plan. In July 2022, Council approved 2026 Capital Improvement Program updates to align with the operating budget timelines. In August 2021, the City Council approved the streamlining of the operating and capital budgets to achieve a, an aligned four-year CIP and operating budget cycle. Only four years, 2022 to 2025, have previously been approved for the 2022 to 2020, 2031 CIP. This will allow the four-year capital operating budgets to be aligned starting in 2026 for the 2027 to 2030 budget cycle. This will be a change from previous practice where council debates and improves a four-year budget cycle every two years, alternating between CIP and operating budget. City Council stewards the budget on behalf of the community and this change will help Council provide greater budgetary oversight, better connect the capital and operating budgets, and help Council strategically focus on revenues and expenditures. This new pro process also gives Councillors more opportunity to affect change within the budgets over the course of their term. 
Last year, the city reimagined its annual report to the community. By adding a new digital storyboard, the city is creating a more accessible, visual, and cost-effective way to share the year's accomplishments with residents. In the past, the city's annual report compiled both the narrative and the finances into one document that was both printed and provided as an online PDF, a method that wasn't overly engaging or accessible. Providing transparency into the city's finances is another important goal of the annual report. Understanding how ta tax dollars are spent helps the community see the value they get living in Lethbridge and builds trust and confidence between residents and local government. The 2022 annual report will be out this spring. On to the final section of the 2023 State of the City Address. Here are some of the next steps and big items to look forward to this year. A one-of-a-kind partnership between key stakeholders was announced in November to try to tackle the health and social challenges of the city and surrounding areas. The creation of the Intergovernmental Health Table is a proactive step in bringing together invested partners to look at key issues affecting members of the Blood Tribe and Lethbridge communities. Members include Vice Chairs of the Blood Department of Health, Vice Chairperson Charles Weaselhead, and myself, plus Deputy Premier, Minister of Infrastructure and MLA of Lethbridge East, Nathan Newdorf, the Ministries of Mental Health and Addiction, and of Seniors, Community and Social Services, as well as Alberta Health Services. We meet on a regular basis to review matters of rev relevant importance to each community with a solid understanding of respect, inclusion, and collaboration. Council last fall directed administration to implement recommendation number one in the Indigenous Placemaking and Public Realm Audit, the development of a committee composed of Indigenous elders, Indigenous members, and knowledgeable people of the community and surrounding region. The next steps will be to create an implementation strategy aligning with the other 30 recommendations and report back by the end of March 2023. This project will involve conducting a review of the current and planned inventory of city-owned parks, neighborhoods, and facilities, collectively the public realm, and determine opportunities to enhance Indigenous placemaking, i.e. the incorporation and reflection of Blackfoot and other Indigenous languages and cultures in the public realm. City crews are getting ready to roll out the green carpet. The first phase rollout last year in three neighborhoods included consultation with participants to help inform decisions around the future implementation of the citywide curbside organics program, which is scheduled for spring of 2023. Each household receive a 240 liter green cart and an eight liter kitchen catcher pail with an ins and outs brochure and user guide about the program. We'll have plenty of other further information in the next few months. In December, City Council voted to rescind previous council decision to proceed with analysis and possible implementation of a ward system on elections, including rescindment of a one-time budget of up to $297,000. We also voted to direct a new potential option for the Governance Standing Policy Committee to report back to Council by Q2 of 2023. Having conducted a robust examination of a precinct model, being one example, and a strategy and timeline for implementation, including any budget and resourcing requirements. The primary impetus for amending the current model is to develop a more democratic election process that would provide for effective and efficient representation, and that the precinct model, as one example, is designed to eliminate the need for a further costly review process by addressing at-large representation and blending it with geographic accountability, thereby approving, improving the existing model. A $3.8 million investment from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Green Municipal Fund will be used to help Leopard residents make real, tangible energy efficiency and sustainability improvements to their homes. Leprish is one of the Alberta communities sharing in over $25 million in funding delivered through the Community Efficiency Financing, the CEF, initiative to implement energy ret 
retrofit financing programs for residential properties. Whether it's new windows and, do and doors, or finally being able to afford installing solar panels, this investment will give our residents an advantage when it comes to being sustainably minded citizens. But perhaps more importantly, we're going to see a reduction in Lethbridge's overall carbon footprint. This funding will allow the City of Lethbridge to establish a lending program for homeowners wanting to make energy efficient improvements. The loan can be repaid over time through City pro property tax bills. One unique and value-added bonus for Lethbridge is that 20% of this funding is dedicated to supporting affordable housing providers. This means some of the most vulnerable members of our community will get to experience improved facilities. The Lethbridge program is expected to be available in February 2023 and will be offered on a first-come, first-served basis to all Lethbridge homeowners. We'll have more information on this to share in the coming weeks. There will also be two webinars on January 27th for contractors to learn how they can qualify for Alberta Municipalities Contractor Directory. The 2022 Alberta Electric Energy Operators, the AESO, long-term plan was identified, had identified a need to construct a new substation in West Lethbridge by 2028, along with a new transmission line connecting the new substation to Lethbridge's existing substation located just south of Copperwood. Council last fall approved one-time funding of $500,000 from the Electric Reserve to complete the Chinook Trail Functional Planning Study in 2023, which is required in 2023 in order to meet approval and construction timelines. Funding will be recovered as part of transportation's long-term CIP budget. Engagement with AESO has been done through the rollout of their long-term plan with additional follow-up meetings and further engagement will proceed as part of the, the requirements involving all affected parties. The City of Lethbridge is currently working on a project that will reimagine how citizens engage with the City on lethbridge.ca. The project goal is to simplify the online experience, allowing residents to find information, pay, apply, or engage with the City of Lethbridge quickly and efficiently. Last fall, we hosted an online survey that tested and tracked how users navigate to different types of information on lethbridge.ca. Residents were asked a series of questions and the path they used to locate the information in order to assist city staff in determining the best layout for the new website. The reimagined lethbridge.ca is anticipated to be completed in late spring of 2023. Following the parade in August, I helped celebrate the return of Whoop Up Days with the first Mayor's Community Barbecue. Thanks to a group of sponsors, 1,300 people outside City Hall on 4th Avenue were fed a free lunch. Musician Trevor Panzak and his band entertained the crowd with a full concert set on the steps of City Hall during the event. While champion chuck wagon driver Chris Moley, who won the Calgary Stampede's Dash for Cash, was on hand for autographs. In addition to the food, music, and face painting for kids, City of Lethbridge staff were able to provide engagement information to almost 100 residents. In November, we had the second Mayor's Community Hockey Challenge. The game featured a team of community partners made up from many local institutions, including Lethbridge College, the University of, Leth the University of Lethbridge, Lethbridge and District Exhibition, and the Lethbridge Hurricanes. The city team saw volunteers from a range of departments including Lethbridge Police Service, Fire and EMS, City Clerks, Land Development, and City Council. With approximately 240 pounds of food donations and gifts received, plus almost $2,000 in financial contributions, the estimated total raised to date from the event is approximately $3,000. I have some new ideas brewing and look forward to finding new opportunities to give back to the community by holding further mayor community events in 2023. The City of Lethbridge will certainly be watching closely next month when the next Province of Alberta budget is released. We have and continue to advocate for areas of need and are excited at the possibilities. We will also be watching closely in May for what impact the next provincial election may hold for Alberta. On behalf of Lethbridge City Council, we wish all the candidates luck in their pursuits. 
and we look forward to working collaboratively with our elected officials at all orders of government for the betterment of Lethbridge. In the next few weeks, you may begin seeing a brand new recruitment campaign around the city. Communications and engagement, along with people and culture, have been working on a new direction for recruitment that will showcase some of the amazing people and the variety of career options we have to offer. There's a sense of pride that comes with working in public service, which we hope shows in the campaign. This video was shot in the spring summer of 2022 and will be the first of a series of videos and marketing campaigns that aim to showcase the different jobs we have to offer. As you'll hear in the video, it's not that we think we're better than other places, but we can't help but being proud of what we have to offer. Here's the video, which is produced locally again by Colbanks Creative. Lethbridge is a place unlike any other. It's not that we think we're better than other places, but we can't help but be proud of the things that make us special. Not the coolies, iconic span, the wind-carved landscape, or world-renowned flora, but the people like you, like her, like them. Our friends, our neighbors, our family. We're proud to work for them. We'd love to work with you for the love of Lethbridge. Well, I stated earlier that Lethbridge is and will be the gateway to opportunity. Our city council administration believes and knows this each and every day. And I hope I was able to provide some valuable information here in the 2023 State of the City Address. Thank you again to the Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce. Please be safe and kind to one another.